Okay, good to have you back. Let's get back into Matthew chapter 9. We're talking about God's uh, prioritizing uh, of what he expects of his people. And I've already mentioned to you, you know, the most important thing is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Of course, if you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, that'll be reflected in how you live your life. You'll be keeping his commandments. And so that one commandment, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, kind of then encapsulates all the other commandments that might be considered lesser commandments. The second most important commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. And so that's the priority that Jesus gave. Everything else is secondary, I should say third and fourth, to those two great commandments. And this was a problem that the Pharisees had. This was a problem that many of us can fall into. When Jesus said to the Pharisees, uh, quoting from Hosea chapter six and verse number six, I desire compassion or mercy and not sacrifice, he's trying to point out to them that your priorities, what you're making important is not so important. You're all big into the ritualistic aspects of the law and you're really neglecting the moral aspects of the law. You guys are great at your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, but when it comes to showing mercy and compassion, that's, uh, you know, you're falling short on that and that, it, that supersedes these other things. Um, a verse comes to mind from Ecclesiastes. I, I, the book of Ecclesiastes is a wonderful Old Testament book. It does raise some questions, and you might not understand all of it. I certainly don't claim to understand all of it. But the last verse, I love the last verse of Ecclesiastes. It's chapter 12 and verse number 13. Here's something that's very important, according to this very wise man. The conclusion, when all has been heard, is, quote, Fear God and keep his commandments because this applies to every person. All right? So that shows you the most important thing you can focus on is keeping the commandments of God. That's why Jesus said to his disciples in the Great Commission, Go into all the world, what do you say? Uh, make sure people come to church services, build church buildings, um, you know, make sure nobody smokes cigarettes. That's not what he said. Those are not the most important things. He said, go and teach them to obey all that I have commanded you. And so we're under the law of Christ. We're gonna have to answer one day for how we lived our lives. You know, what could be more important than keeping the commandments of Christ? Nothing more important than that. Uh, there was a time, uh, we'll read this later on in Matthew 23, an entire chapter that is devoted to Jesus' scathing denunciations of the Pharisees. And he said in Matthew 23 and verse number 23, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin, Okay, well, were they supposed to tithe? Yes, tithing was something that God said to do under the law of Moses. But Jesus goes on to say, but you have neglected the weightier provisions of the law. We could say it this way, the more important things. So you see, there is God prioritizing things. You've neglected the weightier provisions of the law, and now he lists some of them. Justice and, look at this one, mercy. See, I desire mercy, I desire compassion, and not sacrifice. Justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. I found, you know, I found myself quoting this verse to people over the years who I'm trying to just gently offer them a little bit of correction because of the unbalance that I detect in their lives. They're all big on tithing, for example. And, you know, it's debatable whether tithing is even a New Testament uh, concept. I'm not going to go into that in this program. But you try to balance them and you quote the scripture and, uh, you know, trying to help them see that there are more important things than the little things that they're focused on. And inevitably, they always come back at you with, oh, yes, but Jesus did say these things should have done without neglecting the others. You know, and so once again, you can see they're fixated on the others and they've even got a justification for it out of a scripture that would bring them balance if they just read the whole thing and, 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 and act on what it obviously means, okay? So let's keep the main things the main things. Let's keep the important things the important things. Let's not get all wrapped, uh, bent out of shape, you know, because of baptismal formulas and, and uh, petty doctrines and uh, eschatological speculations 
you know, let's, let's keep with the basics and keep loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourselves, okay? Now, let's keep reading here in uh, Matthew 9 and verse number 14. This is the next part of the story. Then the disciples of John came to him asking, why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? <laughs> so Jesus is getting it from all angles here. First of all, the Pharisees criticize him, and now even John disi John's disciples are finding a little fault with him in a picky unish area, you know, about fasting. We've talked about this in past broadcasts, uh, where fasting is on the level of God's priorities. And, um, and they're, they're, they're kind of joining themselves in this sense with the Pharisees. Isn't that a shame that John's disciples saying, hey, you know, we fast, the Pharisees fast, and, but, you know, the disciples of Jesus don't fast. What's going on here? And again, it's a minor, minor thing comparison, in comparison to all the things that they could have brought up. Uh, Jesus graciously replies, and in verse number 15, Jesus said to them, the attendance of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. And so, in essence, what he's saying is, this is not the time to fast. I mean, we're having a wonderful time. This is a, 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 a watershed moment in human history. God the Son has come to the earth as a form of a man, and he's been living here for decades, and now he's got a ministry going around, and he's doing miracles, and fasting just isn't on our radar screen. You know, we got more important things to do. We can't be just sitting around, um, uh, you know, uh, starving ourselves. We've got places to go, people to see, things to do. W w you know, this is not an appropriate time. You don't fast at a wedding. And of course, Jesus also gives a very veiled reference to the fact that he'll be leaving sometime, okay? Next time, new wine. Don't miss it.